everyone, welcome back to... I would like to have a conversation. Nailed it! And on this episode, I'm talking with Todd again. And this time we're talking about... You remember the other week when I gave up coffee? Yep. And I got really, really sick. Yep. And really big, bad, really big, really big bird headaches. Yep. Yeah, so we talked about that. Why I decided to do it, the uh, effects of doing it, the after effects, and... It was a really good conversation talking about like effect of addiction on things and just something, something as simple as coffee. What do you guys think? Um, think it's a good idea I gave it up? Yep. Yeah. You ready to go for a swim? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do a swim. Bye. bye. Say bye, Ray. Cool. All right. Welcome back to I Want to Have a Conversation. Um, today, uh, uh, today we're going to be talking about something uh, Chris had shared with me. That's something he's been working on uh, recently, and I think this is going to really hit home. As long as people take the opportunity to take a look at some of the things that they may be, uh, some activities or hobbies or whatever it is that they may be um, experiencing and and. Uh, acting on, if you will, um, as a part of their way to cope with the things that go on in their life. So um, I know, uh, thank you for sharing, and I know you'll go into a little more detail with this, but uh, I'm curious, um, what, what, what was like the one thing that you had, what, what brought you to the situation that we're currently in? And I'll, and I'll give you an opportunity to, to share what, what you're working on right now. Yeah. So... I quit caffeine on this week. Now I'll go through the story, so how it kind of played out. So I quit caffeine, Tuesday night I decided, like after a call I had with the kids group, we were talking about things like, like past stuff, traumas, whatever, that is carrying forward to now. And were we using it, we're, like when we seek dopamine quick wins, we're probably doing it too because of stuff that's happened in the past. Like there's things that are triggering us or there's just behaviors that we know and as subconscious, there's nothing we can really control with it until we start changing the subconscious. So anyway, in that call, this stuff was just popping up and I was just like, huh. It was like, it just opened up a can of worms. So all day I was just kind of journaling things like, where am I not in alignment right now and showing up the way I should be? And I had a, like, there's been a couple of weeks where I've been like, a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit anxious, like finishing up with the part-time job I had, going back online, Theo getting his assessment for autism. It was just a lot moving in that little period. And I was sort of just sitting around on Tuesday, <laughs> probably while drinking coffee. And I was like, just sort of journaling, started reading a book on stuff and then how I was using caffeine as a dopamine quick hit to get to basically escape shitty situations that are going on in the day. And I don't mean like, like there's just just like general like parenting moments where kids are fighting. It's holidays, it's raining. They can't go outside. They're fighting. Instead of me like trying to work through stuff and sort of being present, I would have a coffee and go hide and just tell them to nick off until I finish my coffee. And then it kind of spiraled into started calculating how much caffeine I was having a day. And it's between like six standard cups to 12 standard cups a day between pre-workouts and the cold brew I make in the morning and then the normal coffees during the day. And it started creeping to later in the day too, where I was like trying to cheat my brain. Like instead of having a coffee after 12, cause I was like no coffee after 12, I'd go get like a, like a, an energy drink like three o'clock, four o'clock while picking up the kids. So it was just constantly just trying to stay at this really elevated level. And I've got, have, I've got like anxiety stuff anyway. So I always knew coffee has been a thing for me. Like I've quitted a few times before and it was always just to have a break and then come back and I'll be like, I'll just keep it at a steady level. But I just keep, it always just keeps going to that higher level, which is the same thing that happened with alcohol. Why couldn't I just keep it at a steady level? It was just always constantly chasing this feel good feeling, the dopamine hit that I would get and the escapism 
which is the main thing. It's not like dopamine's bad. That's one really important key point. We, I just want to, what I'm trying to do is move it to something that's more useful. So where there's like a bit of delayed gratification, but it's going to give me a dopamine hit that's going to last longer, feel better, but there's no punishment cycle that comes around afterwards where I feel like absolute trash. So quit it Tuesday night. Like I literally made my cold brew jug and I was just looking at it in the kitchen and I just tipped it all down the sink. I was like, nah, I'm done. So Wednesday morning, woke up the, the biggest calm down ever. The biggest, like it felt like when I get come off alcohol, I just had the biggest headache. It was insane. Um, kids are home from school. Cat was away for work and the Ruby six. So I couldn't really get in the, out of the house anyway. So I was like juggling the kids with this insane headache. And then, so we had lunch, doing all that sort of stuff, took the dog for a walk. I'm like, yeah, just get outside. There's no rain. I need some fresh air. That'll make me feel better. I had like sunnies on and everything all covered up so the sun wouldn't get in because it was just hurting so much. Come back and I was just like death. Closed all the curtains, put a movie on in the dark for the kids. And I was just on the couch, just like, ah. Oh. It was the biggest crazy withdrawals, just shakes and everything. Halfway through the movie, I tapped Theo. I was like, Theo, can you go get a bucket? And he ran into the left, which is awesome from him, went to the laundry, come back and gave me this bucket. And I had the biggest power screw of my life. It was huge. And the poor kids, Theo went and hit around the corner. I just didn't want to smell it. And Ruby had her eyes covered and then just ran off and hid in the bedroom. It looked like a, probably looked like a demon just spewing up the way I did. And... Then I was just cooked after that. So <laughs> I run cat and told her while I was in the shower, just like, uh. and then she rung her sisters to bring some dinner around for the kids. And we just all went to bed pretty early. I was just cooked. Thursday wasn't too bad, still headachey. Um, but no one knew as bad as it was on Wednesday. And then Friday is when the, like the, and like Thursday night I started kicking in is like the flu like symptoms. This is talked about a lot when people come off caffeine where everything just aches. It's kind of like, like a better, it's kind of like COVID. The first time you ever got COVID where everything's just sore, your hips hurt, your back hurts, everything. Like I'm just walking around. It feels like when both my hips are just like ready to fire. I sit down, they start getting sore. I stand up and my back's sore and I'm like, oh, everything just feels like shit. So I tried to do with a the, training run and it was pretty the average. Deep chill, that deep yeah. Chill. And yeah, and it's like, it's, that's just the weirdest feeling that, or it's the weirdest thing that it's so easy to get caffeine and so easy to just to get drink easily. And it's the come down is so real. And cat asked, he's like, why don't you take Panadol or something to sort of make yourself feel better? And I was like, no, I really wanted to feel it. So I knew exactly like, this is why I needed to get off it and like it's like i was talking to some friends and i'm like why would you bother doing that like does it was a really a big problem it was kind of like these things were creeping in where i was just getting agitated and irritable at that little things i was because i wake up early like even since take getting rid of it, like i'm thinking my my will take a while. It can take up to like a month to a year for your sleep to reset back to normal. But I'm waking up at the same time as I usually do, like anywhere close to 3.30, I just get up. So I'm getting up and my energy's kind of already leveled off. I don't feel too bad, but I was just like quick to react, getting frustrated easy super anxious a lot and using it to just do things. Oh, hey, I've got to do a podcast, like edit a podcast. I'm going to have coffee. I'm going to do a workout. I'm going to have a, like, even if it was an easy workout, it's meant to be zone two. I'm going to have a pre-workout before I do that. So it was just creeping in on everything. It was like the trigger that was like, okay, now you can go do it. Got it. And that's when <laughs> it sort of, I was like, when I was journaling it all, I was like, the only reason I'm sh I was showing up for certain things that 
the moment was just because I was having the caffeine with it. And I was like, I don't want to be like that. That's not in alignment with my best version of me kind of thing. So yeah, been a crazy week. And like, you can sort of see whoever's watching, you see it in my face. Like I'm like tired. My eyes just look like they're like, hey. so yeah, it looks like you've been through something. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, that that's, it's interesting. You know, I think we talk, we talk about coupling habits. Well, there's a few mm-hmm. things I want to, I want to break down in there. Um, it sounds like you started coupling like a caffeine, <laughs> the caffeine habit with, with whatever, you know, came afterwards and, and it goes deeper than this. Um, but what, what I'm here, what the other thing I want to mention before I go back to like the initial question is, um, is to me, what it sounds like is, uh, yes, we, there's a, there's going to be a scientific explanation to coming down off of caffeine mm. and what you're experiencing in the withdrawals. Um, but I also look at this from like a, you know, spiritual metaphysical, uh, standpoint in the sense that like you, you're clearly, uh, going through some stuff and, um, this was like a purge, uh, again, yeah. I understand that there's a scientific explanation for all this, but at mm. the same time, like whatever you're going through, this was, a beautiful release and it, and it might be an opportunity down the road for you to be able to communicate that with your kids when we're old enough to understand, Hey, yeah. like we're all human and you know, daddy was going through something and you remember that time and that, that they might, and it might be impressionable. Um, what I'm, what I'm curious about is to dive a little bit deeper into all of this building up and what that conversation was like in the King's crew that ultimately triggered this. You had touched on it about going back into your past and, and your actions now and how they might not be in alignment, but what was, what was at the crux of that? And what, what, what was said that ultimately like really got you to take a look at this? Because what I find is people are confronted with these things every day. And the ones that I see move through my program quicker are the ones addressing this stuff on a yeah. on a regular basis so um mm-hmm. but having said all that w- what what was said what was like the last trigger if you will or what was like the thing that really um pushed you to to take action so with brian grasso he's like he's got like his eliminate your limits um framework and one of them the frameworks is bound nature versus free nature so this is what we were talking about this week in king's crew where pretty much you got free nature where you're like you're at your best self you show up as your best. You do all the things that you, you want to do. Like everything's perfect. Like you're free flowing. And then basically everything else is bound nature. But bound nature comes from somewhere. It's kind of like a subconscious action that you do. You got no control over it. It just kind of happens. There's patterns that you've learned over time. So we were talking about that and we were like, we we're looking through like um, using avatars to create these characters of what our bound nature is. And so we can name them, not name to shame. It's like name them so we can understand those behaviors and why they were useful back when we were younger and how they helped. And then why they're probably not that useful anymore. So for me, it's kind of like a lot of like shame, guilt, escapism, a lot of escapism, I used to escape a lot as a kid, even in school, like it's like, and it's kind of like, um, a little bit of ego. Cause I flew through school without ever having to do homework or assessments. I think it's like a, it's a mark on the school that I was able to get through that school that far without ever doing that. But I was able to get through with like half assed efforts. I was always good at it, what I was doing, but I didn't do any extra stuff. And then yeah, all that kind of stuff from when I was a kid that I used to get through all the stuff we went through as a kid and not like it's crazy or anything. Like everyone's got different levels of like past stuff, like not to throw around the word trauma, but past traumas. Like, and I don't look back at it as I was like, Oh, it was insane. It's just like, it was just stuff that I learned to get through that time. And it's come through and it's just not useful anymore. And I can see it with all the stuff that I've done with alcoholism, the caffeine, businesses that I've built up and then burnt, like just burnt down or what relationships I've had that fell on apart. It was always this idea of this avatar, this person in my past 
which was needed then. But I don't like I don't need it now. Like it was super useful then. And it's kind of like what we're doing is we're writing a letter like to that person, this avatar, and mine's CJ, which is my it was the nickname of myself. The nickname of myself. It was my nickname when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> the nickname of myself. I just gave it to myself. Now it was my it was my name that everyone knew me for. My cousins called me that, friends called me that. It was just CJ. Um and it was interesting because I've done these letters in the past stuff before. But when I got taught with it before, it was kind of like it was a bad thing. I didn't want to call CJ bad. So it was always really hard for me to do. It was like, I don't think he did anything bad. Not like he didn't know any better. And then now that I've gone more deeper into it and studying it myself, it's like, it's kind of just like, hey, like you did your job. You did well with what you had. It's okay now. Now you can go play. And you know, like even that makes me emotional. But the going through that process, I was going through that like Tuesday after the call Tuesday morning, I was going through that. I've done it a few times. So it's kind of like these things take time to work through. You'll do it a few times to make it work. And I'll probably do it a few more times after this as well, obviously, and refresh it. But yeah, it was kind of, that was the thing that triggered me was like, I'm a, like a better, I'm a escape artist. Like I want to escape uncomfortable situations, uncomfortable feelings, um, boredom, stuff like that, which is like a lot of my work over the last 18 months is to be, find out what it's like to be bored again and be comfortable with that and then see what that opens up into. It creates creativity, which is where it led to me having the idea of space builders, being bored, thinking about stuff, creative thoughts come up and then space builders came to from that. So it's still a work in progress. And it was kind of like that call on Tuesday was like the, the hammer kind of dropped. I was like, I'm, I've been doing, doing well with mostly everything, but there's still some stuff that was lingering around that was like, yeah, my escape, my escape artist traits. And now it's kind of like, the work we're doing now is to obviously write that letter to say, like, it's cool, go play. You can go hang out over here. And there's a, for any, for the one people listening, the idea of this letter and to give it a name is so you can flip the switch. And when a subconscious action, like when, for me, uncomfortable stuff, witching out with the kids, that kind of thing. So it's crazy. It's dinner time. I'm trying to get in a bed. The kids are fighting. It's been wet. The holidays. It's kind of like there's a subconscious action you'll always go to. And mine was like, I'm going to have a coffee and probably go scroll Twitter and just pretend I'm learning. So those are the things I did to escape. And it's like, so that's what CJ does. It's like, nah, today you can go play. I'm going to go and sort this thing out and do a better action that's more useful. So that's kind of what we're working towards to try and figure this stuff out. And it's, it's challenging work. Like when you go back, it's not easy. No. Um, it, I, I know we talked about this a little bit off, off air, if you will. Mm. Um, the, yeah, I think that there's, it's a similar process across the board is what it sounds like and what you had shared with me. Um, this is, this is ultimately one of the hardest things that I found for myself over the past 78 years is looking at um, things that I've done in the past. Um, and I don't mind, I don't mind sharing uh, when I was going through and something similar when I was going through like my d d depression, um, I was using cannabis quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then afterwards I got really like we had talked about, like, do I want this? Do I ever want it? And I, and I told myself like, I don't want to go near it. And then, um, and then I, I did have that like revelation where um, I thanked it. I went through a process of actually thanking it to, cause I don't know that I would have been able to get through that, you know, during that time. And ultimately I think where people can, can take from this is that we may hold a lot of guilt and shame in our life over actions in, in the past 
Um, or, you know, in the case of the people that we work with, you know, when we talk about the number of times that you've gained weight, lost it and gained it again, mm -hmm. um, is to be able to look at those experiences as opportunities to, to learn, uh, yeah. an opportunity to thank yourself for trying, thank yourself for, um, going through that process because the most important thing for you to be successful moving forward and this is a really cool process that you're going through is to take a look at the past a deep look at the past and and it could be one of those experiences where they tried a different program and and it failed um and and ask yourself why you weren't successful or what, what you know what part of it was successful what wasn't like why didn't it work and, um, and in this case, you know, I think looking at your past, you, you, it's really cool to see an opportunity of like, what serves you, what doesn't serve you. Cause I still think that there's moments, whether you choose caffeine or not in the future, that you don't have to go around like being in every situation that makes you uncomfortable, yeah. because I think there's, you can still respect the process that, um, or respect like the energy that you have to be able to tackle something in that moment. Um, but what we don't want to get into is these behaviors of avoidance. Um, yeah. and I think it's really cool that you're recognizing that that's what it was becoming <laughs> versus, Hey, I, I consumed this thing and, um, I, I'm, I'm in this for a moment. I recognize that there's something over here that I need to address or, or, or be with, but just for this moment, I don't think I'm ready and that's okay too. Yeah, but we can't all, we can't also BS ourselves and do that for the rest of our lives. <laughs> and there wasn't kinda... really a question in there, but uh, um, I just that's a really cool process that you're going through right now. Um, what? So you're writing this letter, or you're going to mm -hmm. write this letter? And what what does give us an outline of what that 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 letter entails? It's kind of it's kind of just like sitting down at the table with CJ, my past self, and just sort of saying like, I get it, you feel this, and this is why. And I understand why you reacted this way, but it's okay. And then doing that for like a few bullet points I've kind of put down, and it's like, and then just taking him for, because all of those behaviors, even like, like the alcohol and all that kind of stuff, it sounds really weird, but if I didn't do that, I probably wouldn't be here. So that's the big piece for me, which I keep journaling about. Like I don't have to, it's not like a negative thing or this stuff that's happened. It's always like those things that didn't happen. I might not have been here. Yes. Like those things are all quick hits and you have a bigger down, down after those things. So it usually spirals and makes it worse, but the, there's always like, you have to, which is what I do with coaching. Like there's always a better applied meaning to everything that's ever happened. So the letter I'm writing is basically applying a more affirmative me a meeting to all the stuff that was there. And it was kind of like, it's not like, like I'm throwing stones at the past or throwing stones at my parents or anything like that. It's like, it's kind of a weird, it's weird to kind of explain it because you don't want to get, it's not an angry thing, but then there's five stages of grief or whatever it is. It's not like that. It's just like, Hey, like you've done your job. It's okay to go and play now. You don't have to show up anymore. I don't, I don't need it. And, and an, an acknowledgement. Yeah. Acknowledging that it did a good job. Yeah. Like you did the best you could with the tools you had, which is, is there interesting. It's, it's super interesting writing it out. Yeah. And I just going through this process myself, I, I don't want to see <laughs> it's, it's complex too, because there's, there's a lot of different things that can be involved depending on mm -hmm. how we view those situations and, and just taking your example and, and I can picture it sitting down with young Todd or you sitting down with CJ. What I found is th there, there is this acknowledgement but also 
I want to be mindful with with the word I share because it, I'm not blaming young Todd. Like he did the best he could, but there tends to be like this level, this this forgiveness. Mm. Um, I don't know if you you experience that or it's a part of your process, but I find myself going through these the the process of forgiveness and and uh, which leads me to a deeper understanding of why young Todd was using mm. those coping mechanisms or 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 acting or and behaving in a certain way and and I think that that forgiveness of young Todd then leads more to uh this forgiveness and not not from a because I blamed my parents or wherever I picked it up from but this just level of like deep compassion and empathy for even those that might have contributed to that situation, because now I better understand what they're going through or what they went through. Um, And to me, like that's, that was the deep layers that I, I had ventured through. So I would go through something similar to this writing process. And I think people know all our listeners know I've done some, um, ser- like deep, you know, healing ceremonies and, <laughs> and, and in my, in those deep healing ceremonies. Uh, and the reason why I bring this up is because that was, that was my process. My process was like guilt and shame. And underneath the guilt and shame was the forgiveness. And there's deeper, I mean, it was more complex in my brain than that. But ultimately when I look back, it was this forgiveness. And then it was this anger towards like my parents or whoever it was and then there was this, this this deeper forgiveness and then love and compassion for 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 it all because mm. you're right we we do have a massive opportunity to look at everything in our past and see it as a a huge learning opportunity and applying i love that the 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 term you used applying a different meaning and something that's more meaningful because so many of us carry that stuff in such a heavy way and you can hear it when people speak about themselves and about their current life yeah. that they are they are carrying something heavy and oh man i just wish i could pick it up and set it down for them um yeah but you and i both know we can't do that until they're ready <laughs> yeah it's so it's always like this is like the idea of um for me where the space builders thing come from it's really hard to sort of see or to have that no people just don't have that space to get that self-awareness to see that there's something that's kind of not really helping them it's helping them get through in the moment but it's kind of like in the case of like the caffeine thing i was just using the credit card like just using that as fake energy and the bill was going to come due and the bill was coming due like I was just using more and more and I copped an injury in soccer and these kinds of things. And these things are starting to creep in and I'm like starting to lose my want to train. And there's all these kinds of stuff that happened, which is like I was masking with caffeine and just using my credit card to keep paying for shit. And yeah, the, the bill comes due eventually. Always. So. Always. I was, it's kind of like, it's like dominoes. I've been working on these little things all the way down and like, even like adjusting the training. So it's more re-energizing than taxing. So there'll be only one or two hard workouts a week and the rest are all like pretty chill, but they kept moving the needle forward. But all these things like working on my sleep, <laughs> even though I was taking tons of caffeine, I was still working on my sleep. And then like, journaling all this stuff all these little dominoes and it was like this one was like all those things will probably work better if i knock that one over that's going another thing i was looking at like what is like one thing i could do which would have a huge impact and caffeine was it in the sense of it was like weird things too so i was noticing my skin color on these calls like I would have like little blotches and stuff, which is a known thing for when you have tons of caffeine. And what was that a dandruff thing? Like TMI for people listening, but it's always, it's been, it's, it's been a thing for as long as I can remember, especially since caffeine. And 
that's another caffeine thing. So there's all these little symptoms that I have. And funnily enough, I went to this Chinese medicine doctor and there's always like this concept of the yin yang and people sort of sit in either side. I'm like yang all over. Like I run hot, love chili foods, coffee, all that kind of stuff. So yang people who run hot seek more hot things, but they need to go find balance which is swing back the yin way. So more cooling, karma presence, just to get back to balance. It's not meant not to be on one side or the other. All it is is always meant to be balance. So my, again, like I, I get like dopamine hits from having chili and I have dopamine hits from having caffeine, all those things that make me run hot again. I've got to go back to find balance. And when I did the caffeine thing last time, I think I was off for like three months with this Chinese medicine doctor. And it's like this level of calmness come in. So I'm going back to balance. So it's getting back to baseline and resetting, so to speak, before the next phase of whatever I'm working on. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, so you yeah. go. Well, the, the thing that you, uh, one of the things I wanted to highlight was um, in, in it, and we can come up with different scenarios, but when you were sharing, Hey, there's like these little things I was trying to kind of fix and mm. work on, but really this one thing, you know, if you can see me over here was if yeah. you pull that, then everything else, you know, like yeah. is just going to fall, like you said, with the dominoes. And I wanted to highlight that because that's really important. That's, that's what I find people get really distracted with inside the, the program um, mm. is the consistency. Hey, listen, you know, your metabolism is this, uh, this like living organism, you know, in and of itself. And you might have a 20 year history of create, you know, just doing things to this metabolism where it has tried to hold up and it has tried to do its best, but ultimately the input into the system, um, or the inputs into the system are, are what impacting this metabolism. And for some people, it just may require you to be really, really consistent for a year or two. Mm. Um, but in that meantime, what you're going to go try to work on <laughs> is you're going to go try to get like, you know, the, the, the next supplement that's going to help you lose yeah. weight. Or you think it's, um, you know, that, that one bad meal you had is somehow disrupting, you know, your, 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 your fat loss success. And it's, it's, there's usually one underlying thing. And a lot of it is tackling what's going on up here um, yeah. because when you can when you can start to figure that out um <laughs> and really address that you know I, i'll share one one example um i have a dear friend of mine so um i think it, uh, if anybody's been to my page they know mark mark was my first client he, he's lost up to 80 pounds and has kept it off over three years mm. um, and the one thing that I asked Mark uh, at the very beginning, he's a dear friend, so I could I could challenge him. I said, I want you to ask yourself, what does that, wh who is the person that I want to be and what does that person do? Mm -hmm. And about a month and a half into the program, he was like, you know, man, he's like, I'm, he's like, I can eat uh, the meal prep and eating that same way. Like the, the workouts, none of that is bothering me or, 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 or like I'm sick of. He goes, what I am exhausted from is asking myself who it is that I want to be and what is it, you know, what does that person do? And I said, good. <laughs> I said, if I, if I could have, if I could ask that to every client and they take that challenge seriously, they will get the results and they will start to live the life that they want to live. And fast forward, um, his wife is now in the program. She has been going through six years of trying to lose weight. And through the process of working with her and challenging her um, in those moments that are tough and in those moments that she would normally resort to dopamine hit, you know, quick dopamine hits to escape like things that were stressful. She has now lost 17 pounds. Yeah. And this is this is somebody who has struggled at the same weight for the last six years. Um, and I'm not sitting here taking credit. I'm just really grateful that they they are doing what you're doing and taking the opportunity to challenge themselves on things that aren't serving them and aren't in alignment with what it is that they actually want in their life um mm. and and 
if anybody takes anything away from today <laughs> or or just is is that is you know it's a it's a it's a hard thing to to accept but you know like most coaches i've ever had like they're like hey it's just you you're in the way <laughs> yeah. and i'm like damn you you know and then like i get it on <laughs> such a level but what's really cool is is having these tools to be able to go look at that so yeah. i think many many people realize that to some degree um some don't want to go look at it others are just like well now what i, I don't i don't know how to go look at that and it's really cool that you have the king's crew and processes like that and you know for myself i've had you know some spiritual teachers to to help me work through that um I might have been a little tang tangent, but I get excited. <laughs> I get excited about this stuff because even for you, um, I'm super pumped up and I can sit here and talk about this stuff all day because mm -hmm. this is the growth. Like this is where the magic happens. And some people may just look at this and be like, oh, he's quitting caffeine. Um, but it's really, really freaking important to you because you saw that you're not in alignment with who you want to be and how you show up with your kids and your wife and whoever it yeah. is. I mean, um, and to me, that is why I do what I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if that's the same reason why you do, but I, I, you got me fired up and you got me jacked up. So well, it's kind of like, I think we've talked about offline heaps of times when I stopped doing the busy dad squad because I just, didn't want to have conversations around calorie tracking, workouts, or all that kind of stuff. This stuff is what I find the most exciting conversations because of like the shadow stuff, those anchors holding you back from moving forward. Like when you can unpack that stuff, everything just sort of flows. Like those dominoes just fall over naturally. It's, so much easier so yeah it's hard and it's just the stories we tell ourselves so it's just rewriting our story and we get to and choose guess it what? Then. you're gonna run up into it you're gonna run into the next one at some point too. Yeah. like you'll feel the flow mm. but then you'll run up into something but what's cool is each time that you experience that block or um you know that period in your life where you just don't feel like things are moving that you get you had now have each time that you move past that you have this beautiful opportunity to like we just spoke about to look back at those experiences and go hmm like how did i get through that right yeah. it may not be the same way that you get through this one but you've got so many more tools in the toolbox and that's what i found over my process was like i was reading every different book not not in a way where it was unhealthy i was just like Hmm, that wasn't it. That didn't seem to like pull, you know, pull the lever. That didn't seem to pull the lever. And then I would read something and I'd be like, oh, and that would just pull the lever a little bit. And I'd be like, cool. Like that there was a piece there that I needed. And um, and that's what I love about the conversations that you and you and I have had is mm -hmm. you've been really awesome at helping me pull on different strings and different levers that have helped me move um move forward and get to the space that I'm at now where I know I'm going to run up into other things, but I'm also excited about those um, versus uh, just being like, Oh, not another thing, you know? Um, yeah. So uh, thank you for that. But I think what you just said is a really good takeaway is like excited about potentially running up against obstacles because you're doing the work. And I think that's the same thing for me. Like, even though I look flat as a tack on this call, the I'm excited for what I can figure out now I'm taking this coping mechanism away so I can do the work that allows me to take my next the next leap forward that I need to do, whatever that is. And I don't care what it is, but I'm going to get just sort of cut that cord to DJ and say, thanks, man. Go play. You're all right. And just see what happens. That's what I'm excited about. So yeah, the deep works hard. So like to wrap it up for people, the deep works hard. It's meant to be, that's why it's called deep. And but it's kind of like when you are ready to do it, it makes such a big difference on stuff. And some people don't have to do it because yeah. for whatever reason, they can cruise with what they're doing.
which is cool. They're good. There's no judgment, but it's kind of like, yeah, if you're feeling off or you feel like you're doing stuff that isn't aligned with your best version of you because you're just trying to get by, it might be worth having that kind of conversation to sit down with yourself. What are some things I'm doing right now that aren't alignment with what I want to be? And then that's the first point. What One of the things that I'll say that might, and you had kind of talked about like kind of, I don't know if it was like cutting ties with CJ or what. Mm. One of the things that um, th- through my process I've, I've been able to learn because what, what I've come to understand is, um, and I'll just use CJ as an example. Mm. Um, at at some point, CJ may rear his ugly head again. Like, yeah. and I don't mean that in like a bad way, but CJ is going to be there. And yeah. I I I made this this analogy. Uh, I, so going through the process of like these deep ceremonies, um, one of the you get these tier these teachers to come along the way. I just want to reframe it for somebody so that way they don't because I I made a mistake or you know I. What happened with me was I was in the ceremony and afterwards I was like, oh man, I revisited something that I thought I had already hashed out. Mm. And so I'm out there like afterwards, we have an opportunity to talk about these things. And I sat with this guy and I was like, I was, I was sitting in this like guilt and shame spiral. And I was like, man, I really thought that like I had, you know, I was done with this. I thought I had like mm. fixed it. Right. And he said, he goes, I don't, I, he's like, I, I don't, he's like, if you mind, I, I share a reframe. He said, I don't really like to think of me cutting ties with it or that I'm done with it. He said, um, I often think of it like this spiral staircase. Yeah. And that as you're ascending the spiral staircase, you've got this, you've got this thing in the middle. And he said, you, you know, you start to heal or, or like an onion, you start to layer and you start to peel back these layers. But as you ascend the staircase, you get an opportunity to see it from a different view. Yeah. And, 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 but what I also said in that, that, that moment was you're, you're going to, these things are going to continue to come up and, and they're going to come up kind of on like deep, these deeper levels. You're going to start to experience maybe some other time, some period in your life where you're going to be challenged. You're going to have floods of emotions and, and CJ is going to pop back up and he's going to mm. be like, you want some caffeine mm. <laughs> or you want some alcohol or you want this. And the, the term I like to use is integration. Mm. And it's a, it's about taking CJ and saying, all right, CJ's back. What does CJ need right now? Mm. Right. And it's, and it's, a, it's the similar, it's a, it's a similar process where you can write a letter you can sit with CJ, whatever your process is, but at that moment, CJ is going to come back. Yeah. And what does CJ need? And he just, he needs some love. And it's really like what our inner child, right? Like our inner child just needs some love right now. Mm-hmm. And I know that might sound a little woo woo, but um, all that to say that like the, the, the integration period, the integration aspect of it is when I started taking little Todd and when these these actions and behaviors that weren't serving me became on display, I pulled him back in and I said, ooh, what do you need from me right now? Because yeah. I'm being really hard on you right now, Todd. I'm being really hard on the world around me. Mm-hmm. So I need that that yin right now. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I know we're throwing out a bunch of different references. Yeah. Here, but just, to <laughs> yeah. Bring it, just to bring it into people is like you know, all of these things exist. And if you want to go down the hero's journey and all these metaphors, they're there for a reason. They're there yeah. for us to help us understand ourselves. And, and uh, I really love this conversation. Um, I don't know what people can take away. I don't really have anything <laughs> great to say. I'll let you close since, since I open, but I just, these are the conversations I love. And I'm really glad that you're creating space for, for people to be seen and heard. And if they're willing to show up and, and be vulnerable is, is the biggest part um, and the hardest part. And when we can do that, um, magic happens. Yeah. Yeah. I did I what you're going to say? It's kind of like <laughs> the whole idea of the conversations like this podcast was to have these vulnerable conversations that people generally don't get to have. So they don't have a tr- like a group of people or tribe around them. They can do it with. So my hope was that if they were listening in, it would just sort of like crack that shell just enough for them to maybe seek out a tribe to do it with, 
or it's enough for them to have a conversation with themselves when they can start moving the needle. So again, shout outs, like if anyone wants to come on and have a conversation with the both of us about anything, we are more than happy to, um, yeah, facilitate that for you and obviously do it in private as well. We love talking about this stuff. So yeah, do this, do the, do the sign off. Todd, you're good at it. All right. <laughs> Hit the like button. No, wait. Is that on this? We're not on YouTube yet, right? Anyways, uh, subscribe. Um, uh, We don't have any sponsors or anything like this, so um, nor nor do we care. But uh, no, just please hit the subscribe. If you, again, if you feel like you're you hit this wall or you've been challenged in your life and you're just not 100 percent sure where to go, um, it's really it's it's important to have people in your life that um you feel like you can be seen and heard in and i know it just seems to be chris's in my life um and and i wanted you know the everybody to understand and know chris has been a big part of how i've been able to move through um these last two and a half years of online you know online coaching and and then um seeing where i wanted to be back in my clinic but then my my other the other chris in my life um you guys hold space in a way and I hope people in their life can find people who can hold space but also challenge them in ways that that will draw this out because to me I think there's nothing scarier than going like living a life unlived if you will I know there's a lot but like that's that's the scariest thing to me I was on a I was on like a business retreat we climbed like a 14,000 foot mountain in Colorado and then afterwards we, we all sat around and there were a few of us and the one question they asked was um, what's the scariest thing um, in one year from now what would be the scariest thing to happen and the the the, the major the the agree the the answer that we all agreed upon was staying the same and that's what's scary to me and that's why these conversations with yourself or if you can find somebody to challenge you um, are going to help move you through that and that's what I hope people can get out of this is yeah. don't go through life having it unlived um, because these things can be tough and they can be challenging, but they are so worth it. So hit yep. that subscribe button. What do you got to say? You got a little, I, you were going to say something. No, I was going to say, totally agree. It was perfect. Good sign off. I'm going to go have a nap. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Go get that now. All right. Thanks everybody. We'll talk All to right. you later. Thank you.